we go. Big old root system on that rascal. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. It is Sunday, November 13th here in South Georgia. Got a nice cool day out here, I think. The high today is around 55, so it's be cool the rest of the week. Got a few things we need to do in the garden today. We need to check on our peppers that we're trying to overwinter. Do a little maintenance on them, probably cover them back up for this cool spell. So we're gonna take care of those peppers. Then I got this huge perennial spinach plant over here that's kind of outgrown my greenhouse. We gotta figure out somewhere to put that. But before we do that, let me explain why I have all these band-aids on my hands. So if you follow our channel, you know we've been busy propagating a lot of fig trees that we'll eventually put on our website for sale early next year, late winter, early spring, sometime around there. So I've been doing or trying to do around 30 or 60 a day just to stay on good pace. That way I get all my cuttings started by the end of November. Now's a great time to take cuttings and get those started once still a little warm outside and we can keep it a little warm in the greenhouse before it gets too cold so i've been on that pace well yesterday saturday i had a good block of time to work in the greenhouse and i was like i'm gonna go ahead and bust out a bunch of cuttings today that way i can kind of get ahead of schedule a little bit so I ended up doing about 250 cuttings yesterday, which is a lot. And as I got between 200 and 250, I started feeling my hands getting sore a little bit. I was like, oh, it'll be all right. We'll just kind of tough through it till we get, you know, the last tray filled out with cuttings. And then I was taping the top of one of the cuttings and I saw blood on the tape. Well, I had did so many that I basically rubbed my hands raw until they bled. You remember that old Brian Adams song? He played it to his fingers bled. Well, I propagated figs to my fingers bled. And yesterday they were really, really sore. Usually I'm not one to put a band-aid on anything, but I couldn't hardly do anything with my hands. It's a little bit better today, but it still hurts pretty bad. So you never see me wearing gloves on these videos, but probably gonna wear some gloves today because my hands still hurt pretty bad. Thankfully, I've got a bunch of gloves. All those Ollie Gardens raised beds, we got every package came with a pair of gloves. So I've got a nice, nice stash of gloves here that we can use in the garden today. I think we'll be all right. Just gotta be a little more delicate than normal until all this heals up. All right, so now for the garden work we need to do today. So we've got this row of chocolate habanero peppers here that I'm growing for my buddy Mark. And we're gonna try to grow these all throughout the winter down here. And speaking of Mark, I've been using a lot of this hot vinegar sauce here on all the greens we've been eating lately. And this is some really, really good stuff. So if you wanna give this a try, you can go to his website, hottarsauces.com. Use the code LazyDogFarm to get 10% off. He's got all kind of good stuff over there. So Mark brought me these pepper plants when they were just tiny little seedlings, just popping from a seed starting tray. I grew them out in our greenhouse a little bit. We transplanted them, I don't know, couple months ago late summer early fall now right after we transplanted them we were getting some really heavy insect pressure on these they were getting tore up pretty bad it's probably the same thing that was getting after those polar bear pumpkins that were right over there you can see now that the pest pressure has subsided a little bit i did spray them with a zara a couple times and having that row cover on them which is not on there now but it was on there probably helped out a good bit too so back in early November when we had that rogue first frost, I put some of the Agribon frost protection fabric over these peppers. And as you can see, they all survived just fine. And I left it on there for at least a couple weeks there because it seemed like that moist, humid environment that that fabric created was fairly favorable to the peppers and also seemed to protect them from getting quite as much pest damage as they would have gotten uncovered. Now we're going to put the Agarbon back on them in a little bit. We've got a few things I want to do before we do that. So the first thing I want to do is give these plants a little bit of juice. They look pretty green and healthy, and we're even starting to get a few blooms on some of these larger plants. You can see a few right there. I want to try to stimulate a little more bloom production on these guys. 
So we're going to use the old simple and easy bucket method here with some of this AgriThrive fruit and flour. And the reason we're using the bucket method is because I just want to give this to the peppers. I don't really want to give this to the cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, all the other stuff in this plot. That's why we're not going to inject it through the tape. We'll just use the easy bucket method. So I'm not going to measure this. Just going to put a few glugs in here. That should be good enough. And then we'll fill her up with water. All right, we got our bucket full. I'm going to take this and stir it around just a little bit. Then we'll just take our little pitcher here. I'll give some to each of these plants right down there where the roots are oh, ran off a little bit on me we'll start out with a pitcher full for each plant and then we'll see how much we have left over and then we'll kind of try to equally divide that out all right so that five gallon bucket full there was just enough to give a pitcher full or so to each of these pepper plants now we need to address the support situation now some of the plants in this row are kind of short and bushy and I think they'll be just fine. Well some of them like this guy right here are getting pretty tall and looking like they might want to fall over a little bit. So what I'm going to do is top these plants and that way we can get more lateral growth. The plants will stay more bushy and we won't have to worry about setting up some type of trellis system because the trellis system would make these things harder to cover. You know, I'm going to cover them for the next few weeks when we have this cool spell, but at some point I may need to uncover them as well. So putting the cover back on and off is a little harder to do when you got stakes sticking up there. It's a lot easier just using those hoops that I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to come through here and I'm just going to get a little bit of this top part here. And hopefully that'll make everything spread out instead of growing taller. And then the next thing we're going to do that will hopefully keep these plants upright without any form of trellis is we're going to heal them a little bit. Normally we don't heal peppers, we do heal tomatoes, but in this case we'll cover that drip tape there and we'll give a little more support to the base of these plants. Now I did turn on the drip tape even though these plants don't really need any water right now. We got plenty from storm to cold coming through here, but I turned it on just so it will bury a little better. So. I'm just going to take some of this surrounding soil here we'll kind of heal up this side of the plant and then get on the other side here and do the same thing maybe get down here and kind of straighten her up a little bit like that and i don't think she's going anywhere now all right so we got those healed up there i think that's going to work pretty dang good to keep these plants supported without having to give them any kind of additional trellis. Now I mentioned having to remove the frost protection cover from time to time. One, because if it strikes off warm again, it may get too hot underneath there. The other reason has to do with weeds. So when I pulled back or took off the frost protection cover just a week, week and a half or so ago, I had a lot of weeds in there, especially a lot of this stuff. Our old winter friend, Mr. Chickweed. And I've been having to come out here basically every day and just scratch around a little bit and I finally got rid of it all because this stuff here is hard to kill with Without just pulling it and throwing it out of the plot but as you can see we got it cleaned up pretty good but that warm moist environment that that agribond creates is going to make weeds thrive as well so from time to time i need to pull it off just to make sure the weeds aren't getting out of control underneath there so now that we've done all the maintenance work we need to do on these chocolate habanero peppers let's take our hoops here and reinstall our frost protection fabric because they're probably going to need it in the next couple of weeks. All right, so that stuff there is a lot easier to install when the wind is not blowing too bad. We're getting a few little gusts today, but I was able to get it pretty tight and straight there and that should keep them happy for a while we may eventually have to go to some larger hoops and if we do that's okay but that's working pretty good for now 
All right, now let's talk about this perennial spinach plant here that we need to relocate. So this is something that Mark, the hot tar sauces guy, gave me as well. When he gave it to me, it was kind of small, looked kind of pitiful, and we put it in the greenhouse, kind of revived it a little bit, gave it those daily micro doses of AgriThrive, and you see it looks really good now. So this is called Okinawan spinach. It's a perennial spinach. It's a tropical plant. I guess it's not a perennial everywhere, but in warmer climates, it's perennial. It's very similar to another type of perennial spinach called longevity spinach, but the Okinawa here has the purple undersides of the leaves, as you can see there. Now, I haven't eaten a lot of this, but I do snack on it from time to time, and it's pretty dang tasty. Tastes a little bit like spinach, but it has almost kind of a little minty flavor to it as well so you can eat it raw as a salad or you can saute it cook it down a little bit like you would spinach great little plant to have here we do have to worry about the frost getting it though it is not cold tolerant to frost i have read some things that said you can heavily mulch around the base of the plant and it will come back the following year but we want to be diligent to kind of protect it a little bit wherever we end up planting it be able to protect it from any freezing temperatures that do roll around in the winter here and because this is a tropical plant it likes the heat but i did notice during the middle of the summer inside the greenhouse there on really hot days even with the sides rolled up it would look like it was suffering a little bit so it likes the heat maybe just not as intense as it was inside that greenhouse on some of those summer days i'm thinking having it outside here it'll do a little bit better and obviously it's gotten too big for the greenhouse so we need to find somewhere to put it where it can spread out and do its thing so i'm thinking a good spot for it would be in one of these tartar fire ring raised beds here we have close to this pecan tree right on the edge of our barn now we have several different things going on in these and we won't cover that on today's video we'll address that probably on the next couple video got some things we need to move around maybe some things we need to harvest in here but i've got this one bed here that has some snapdragons we planted last winter and they look like they were maybe going to make another go for it this winter but uh, they're looking kind of pitiful so i think i'm going to scratch those and plant it right there so the first thing we need to do is get these snapdragons out of here. Now, I don't know if I'm going to pull them up or not. I may just try to cut them at the base here. Kind of leave the roots in the soil. That might mean they grow back a little bit, but I think that'll be all right if they do. We'll leave all that root network in the soil there. That looks like... A little bit of ginger there. Hot dog. We planted that last year and never really did anything. There's a little piece of ginger. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Get some of these pecans and stuff out of here too. That's pretty clean there. Not a whole lot of weeds in here. Just some leaves and stuff, which will be all right. Now let's dig us a big hole in the middle here. We can put that big old plant. Now just to make this a little easier to plant and hopefully help it bush out a little bit, I'm going to prune it just a little. Supposedly these plants tolerate pruning very well and it helps them bush out. So I'm just going to get a little bit of these top leaves here. We'll save these. May make something with them in the kitchen tonight. Just kind of, kind of get some of these hanging branches off of here. all right that should be pretty good all right let's see if we can make us a big enough hole here put this big plant into we don't have enough soil this bed is sunken down a little bit we don't have enough soil i've got a piece of a bag that we can use sometimes it's just easier to use your hands in it See if we can work with that. If I can get this bad boy out of the pot here. There we go. Big old root system on that rascal. So I got a little bit of this mushroom compost left over from when we did our other raised beds. Won't hurt anything to put that in there. 
little bit of pot and soil left over. There we go. That worked out just right. Now I know that doesn't really look centered there, but it's mainly because of the direction the plant was growing in that pot sitting inside the greenhouse. Hopefully out here it'll spread out a little more evenly and we can always prune it to get it to spread evenly around that fire ring. The base of the plant is in the middle of the fire ring. You just got a lot of the vegetation leaning this way. And if we do have a frost coming, all I have to do is take some T-posts and put them either on the inside of that ring or right on the outside. I've got these little frost protection jackets that work really good for round raised beds like this and that'll keep them nice and happy during any freezing temps. And I do want to try and propagate this plant at some point. I just haven't got around to it yet. But from what I hear, it's pretty easy to propagate from cuttings. I realize a lot of you out there probably could never grow this where you live because it gets too cold there. But for some of you that live in southern climates, this may be something you want to try as a nice perennial plant on your homestead. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Nice to get a couple of little small things done around here on this lazy Sunday. Also nice to feel some cool weather outside. Looks like we're not gonna be in the 80s for at least the next week and a half, maybe even two weeks. So we're gonna enjoy that. While it lasts, it could be 80 again come Christmas. So we just enjoy the waves as they come. And if you've ever tried any of these perennial spinach varieties, whether it be the Okinawan like we have, Longevity, or any other perennial spinaches, let me know about those in the comments below, how well they did for you and just kind of what your experience is growing them. As always, I'll put links in the description below for any products that we mentioned or used in this video. In the description, you'll also find links to our affiliate partners. We've got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got garden blogs, recipes, hats, shirts, all kind of good stuff over there. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life